bright array of city Jim Burton lights. sings about everything from deep water and city lights to blue diamonds and big iron. From the time he was a wee one, he has been immersed in rhythm and blues. His new CD trends more towards country. One of my favorite tunes, Big Blue Diamonds, just happens to be on it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. great song. We were talking about it. I, you know, originally, I, I heard it first in 1962. It was a big, it was an R&B hit for Little Willie John, right. the guy that did the original Fever and a bunch of other and who died in the penitentiary in McNeil Island in Washington. <laughs> after killing a guy down in the International <laughs> District in Seattle I see. in 1968. That, that, that can <laughs> cause you trouble. <laughs> yeah, but, but so, and, and then years later, you know, Doug Somm from the Sir Douglas Quintet and then the Texas Tornadoes was living over on Vancouver Island and, and back and forth here, and, and we spent a lot of time together. And one night he sang that song, and I thought, now nah, i got to put that in my head. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when we decided to do this, I said, that would be a good one because it really has got that crossover between... And so we found out that it was written in 1950 by a guy named Kit Carson and was then originally recorded in 51 by Rex Perkins and then Tex Ritter and then Red Foley. Ernest Tubb did it. Jimmy Dean did it. And then it became an R&B hit. Well, see? see? And this, that's what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. that thing of this music. You, know, you, you can't... Well, and it tells a, a good story song because a good song. she wants big blue diamonds right, yeah, yeah. and uh, gives up the band of gold, right, as yeah. I recall. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then she's lonely. That's right. And she realizes at the end of the song <laughs> right, that, that maybe that band of gold with the love was better than those big smashing diamonds. Mm. Indeed, yeah. Mm. Uh, music makes her dance and diamonds makes her smile, <laughs> as my granddaddy used to say. Mm -hmm. uh, certain things capture your eye, but pursue only those who capture your heart, written in here. Yes. Uh, proverb? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a Native American proverb that uh, I thought was uh, appropriate and some words to live by. And what about, no kidding, what about Stavely? Well, uh, Stavely, Alberta is where my, uh, my uh, dear departed uh, mother-in-law, who was just a really a wonderful woman, she, that, she was born and raised there. And, and left it, you know, to come to Vancouver at an right. early age. But, but, but it's, uh, and it's, uh, we were, it's right on the road, but it's, it's about halfway between Calgary and Lethbridge, and so. The horse and the cowboy so, on the sign so, yeah, says, many, welcome to Stavely. Many, many times we would go, home of Canada's first indoor rodeo. <laughs> well, who knew? Yeah, but, but, and they have a, they have a big uh, cowboy poetry thing there as well uh, on, on, every year. And, but, but it's just a, a deal where you would travel through there on the way, you know, be on tour, right? And, and one time, uh, one day, I said, hey, I want to stop here and take a look. You know, and there's not much left of the town. There used to be, um, well, the, 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 the grain, the silo's still there, but a couple of them are gone now. I mean, yeah. There used to be three or four of them, now there's one. And uh, there's not, you know, the hotel, and you can get a beer. But that beautiful sign on the side of the highway, and it just happened to be one of those beautiful days on the prairies with the skies a certain way. And, you know, I just took out my phone and took that picture, and, and anyway, I thought it and really put kind it of inside the summed CD. up. Yeah, yeah. And on the back, of yeah. course, you and the sister yes, my, my riding sister Mary a buffalo, and I, yeah, a that's, bison. Uh, on, uh, on vacation at Pikes Peak, Colorado in 1954. <laughs> Well, <laughs> see, I mean, it, it all, this, I see. this stuff all comes You're quite well honestly. This stuff. Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. it does. Uh, well, there's some country in your soul. I said oh, that yeah. before in, yeah. in, in, in all of us. Uh, acting part, acting, acting. Uh, you miss doing Wise Guy? And oh, yeah. I mean, we had the friendships I made uh, and, and the, the, time, the time we had. That was also, I mean, Wise Guy was, was a, such a great, well-written show at the beginning and, and uh, uh, groundbreaking. And... Uh, just for me, it was such a vindication, and for my folks, of all those years of you know struggle and heartache, and then when I lost my legs in '72, I thought I'm never going to get a job, you know. But I, right. but I, th but I, in my head, I'm, I said, yes, I am someday. Fifteen years later, I, I got this job on T, you know, and it was that, that first episode when I came out and I was in the credits and I was there, I was on the there you were and in a chair, in, yeah, a in, chair in a chair, which I rarely see you in. Right. Oh yeah. Very, yeah. I really, I don't like to. You know, it's people treat you differently when you're in a wheelchair. You've it's, noticed. That, oh, it's. Mm. They act like you can't hear. Oh, yeah. uh, one of my best friends, yeah. quadriplegic, and he said, everybody speaks up when you're in a wheelchair. This, and I've always said th to them, this is a funny, I can hear fine. Yeah, this it's is my one. legs that don't move. We were, we were in, uh, when my daughter Kate was about eight years old, so this is quite a while ago, we were going to St. We were in the airport in Minneapolis, and we had, had to go through uh, security again, right? 
And so, and I'm in the chair, and we're together. And my wife, Robin, had gone was somewhere else at the time. So we pull up to where the, and and the guy comes over and says to the eight year old, "Can he walk?" <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Can you he know, walk? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, I he's mean, thinking like, it. As if he looked at me or something, it would, mm -hmm. you know, he would be in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? You know, sure. And, and, yeah, well, was, you and I do go back, as yeah, you know, with yeah. the late uh, Bob Spence, big yeah. tall Bob. Yeah. And I remember you had your new, your, you had old leg. Well, yeah. you had lost your legs in the, in the car accident. Right, yeah. And the legs, they got you. Didn't work all that well. Oh yeah, well, they were. I mean, those were like World War One. You <laughs> know, they were leather we, with, with laces mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> so we decided to have a fundraiser, oh, and yeah. I'm thinking it was at the Yale. I can't oh, no, remember no, that was where pre, was, it was it. Pre -Yale. Pre Yale. Yeah, it was pre Yale. We did one. At, well, we did at the Commodore. That's it. Yeah, we did it at the Commodore. Yes. Jim uh, uh, needs been, new legs. We need to have a yeah, that function. Would've, that would have been uh, about 1981 or so, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yale Bob, what a wonderful guy. Yeah. What a great guy. Yeah. He loved firefighters and he loved veterans. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he loved yeah. us. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. He used to call me Fufu Beans on the radio. Yeah. I said, Bob. He'd yeah. say, Fufu, what's up? I said, We're doing the news here. You've got to like, yeah. <laughs> like smart yeah. enough. Yeah, these, come on. Mm. But, but not now, but see, now you can do that on the news because have, have you noticed that, you know, like watching the news now, it's like watching entertainment tonight. It's not like, you know, Chet. Huntley and David Brinkley, or where they would, no. you know, or Walter Cronkite, and it no. was the news, and and now it's all, you know, yeah, it's Squire a, Barnes and <laughs> Randine or uh, whatever. God yes, no, I know you can dress <laughs> yeah. differently, you can do all of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I I remember when uh, Freddie Latrimo tried to read the news for the CBC disc jockey, if you don't know Fred, <laughs> and uh, Music Man and all of that, and he kept getting the giggles. Yeah. And they said, he's not a newsman. Yeah. But now he would be. Now it would be. Yeah. Well, maybe you never know. You always have to make a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, always you, have yeah, to make do. a living. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whose albums do you buy? Uh, gee, you know, a lot of uh, stuff that's, that's a, a lot of world music mm -hmm. and, and uh, a lot of reissue stuff, old blues and, and country and. Sure. Uh, and vinyl's back. And yeah, vinyl. Yeah, well, you know, it, I, I, you know, it's it's kind of a shame. There's a whole generation of people that don't know what what music sounds like. <laughs> yeah, all they've heard is these compressed, mm -hmm. digitally compressed mm -hmm. MP3 things that are like that big. Whereas you get a really good stereo and a and a good pressing on a vinyl, you know, and the music is supposed to be in that big is this big, you know, and uh, they don't even know. But. Your first record. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, well, the first record I bought? Yes. Uh, Transfusion by Nervous Norvis. It was a 45. <laughs> yeah. Famous guy. Right, yeah. Nervous Norvis? Yeah, Nervous Norvis. Uh, how, this is, uh, well, I'm a tooling down the highway doing 79. I'm a twin pie papa and I'm feeling fine. Hey, man, dig that. Was that a red stop sign? <laughs> Transfusion, <laughs> transfusion. I'm just a crazy mess with contusions. Never, never, never gonna <laughs> speed again. Pop the fluid in me, Louie. <laughs> and, and, and the flip side was was called was D I G. D I G spells dig. D I G means groovy. D I G means yeah. <laughs> that, was, that would have been about 55 or something. I bet. And yeah. your mother on, probably on said. Records. Well, uh, James, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're driving James, me nuts. Kevin, you're driving me nuts. <laughs> yeah. Turn that off. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they always. They never, Were they musical? Your parents? Well, they, they loved music. They never had a chance. I mean, we we had a piano in the house, and bo both my sisters and I. The first we started kindergarten, and we started taking piano lessons. It was something that that they always really wanted us. They had never been able to do it. My my maternal grandmother, uh, Mary Noonan, she uh, had you know ten kids. Her husband died when. Well, she, my mother was the second youngest of ten. And her dad died when she was two. Okay, so this woman with all these kids, you know, the, the old lady that lived in the shoe yeah. sort of thing. And, it, and her great loves in life were listening to the Cardinal Baseball on the radio and on Saturday afternoon, the Metropolitan Opera. And, and she never got to go to the ball game, and she never not to go to the opera, but she loved them. Baseball and opera. Yeah. There's probably a link there somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite movies, Bull Durham. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, before we bah humbug you away. Ah, yeah, good. We uh, should talk about this. 
This weekend, uh, we're down at SFU Woodward's, uh, the Milton and Fay Wong Experimental mm -hmm. Theater, and uh, we're doing two staged readings of Bah Humbug. We should have been doing it as a live thing, like as we've done the last couple of years, uh, but because of these uh, strikes, the, the union unrest at right. uh, SFU, we've, we've been forced, to, we, we can't do it as a play. And, but we were allowed to go in on, on Saturday at 2 in the afternoon at 7.30 in the evening. Uh, and it's a, we, we have re taken the Charles Dickens classic, uh, Christmas Carol, and reset it on the downtown east side. And Jay Brazo plays Ebenezer Scrooge as the owner of a pawn shop on Hastings Street. And uh, Margot Kane, the great uh, First yes. Nations actor, yes. she, she's the narrator. Uh, Tom Pickett, great singer, great actor, he's Bob Cratchit. I played the ghost of Jacob Marley, and, and we intersperse it with, uh, with both traditional Christmas songs and with modern stuff. For example, as Marley, I do Tom Waits' uh, God's Away on Business. Tom Waite, and you got Tom <laughs> Waite, we're out of time, but you got Tom Waite. Uh, I don't, you didn't get him out of prison, he wasn't in prison. Oh, you no, went no. on the stand for Tom Waite. Yeah, yeah, to when he was suing uh, Frito-Lay for uh, copying his persona to do a Doritos ad. And did he get two million he, he out of that? He got two and a half million dollars. Two and a half million. And, and he sent me, I got in the mail, a, a, a Marine Band harmonica case, and inside it was like a gravity knife, you know, like a, a switchblade LA gang knife, uh -huh. and a hand scrawled note from Tom, Dear Jim, thanks for helping me cut through the bull. You're a pal, Tom. <laughs> How nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Mr. Jim Burns and his new CD, I Hear the Wind in the Wires. Remember, you can listen to our conversations on YouTube or follow me on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer. There will be many more talented, talkative musical guests to come like him. Thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today.